Hey guys, it's Dr. Sebastian Gonzalez. This video is for clinicians only because we're going to go over a case study today. I was asked on request by a couple listeners of the podcast to go through some case studies. So I thought there'd be a great case today who was a, um, he's about a 30, 40 year old gentleman that had some heel pain. Uh, there was some heel pain right around the calcaneus in the heel. Uh, also too, there was a past ankle injury and a past uh, injury that actually required surgical procedure years ago. Uh, and he also had some knee pain into the joint line, which is the meniscus. So for, if you are not a clinician, you might wonder what the heck are these things? Well, just think about heel, foot, and knee pain. Uh, heel, ankle, and foot pain. So I'm gonna go over today some of the stuff that I looked at in regards to his care and how I kind of just kind of demystifying how to use corrective exercise or rehab to address a case like this. Honestly, in this case, I did not even really even put my hands on him other than for an exam purpose. A lot of other cases I will actually treat, uh, manual therapies adjust and so on, but he responded so well that why bother? He did an extremely good job of, and he responded to corrective exercise and loading patterns. Here we go into it. Okay guys, so the first thing I was able to do with this gentleman was number one that we see that when I watched him walk, visually you can see that he was impacting his heel very firmly. His knees were relatively straight. He was a really hard walker, walker as I say. So that's the first thing. And I typically ask him, what creates your pain? So he had a couple things. Number one was walking. Number two was a side to side shuffle. He said this would create his ankle pain. It would also increase his knee pain, which rightly so, because we have a lot of shear or movement this way, and if he can't control it, it's gonna irritate the knee. Now, because he had some surgical intervention on his ankle, I thought actually in the beginning that I was gonna to have to do a little bit more manual therapy with him. However, he responded very well to the first exercise I gave. So here's how we did it. First thing is I said, look, what is your measure? What is your measurement? And he said, it's this. I said, great. Let's use that, okay? Remember what it feels like. Remember where in, in the movement that it bothers you, and we're gonna retest that in a second here. So, the first thing he did was the Valet Forward Lean. That's V-E-L-E, -E, Valet Forward Lean. Uh, I've shown this video on some of the other uh, videos that I've, or I've shown this exercise on some of the other videos I've done. Um, but again, today's about implementa implementation. So here's what we did. Is I told him that first we have three points of contact in the foot here. One, two, three. Toes wide spread, just like that. We're gonna drill these things into the ground. Let me see actually if I can get, uh, I'll get my camera to see if we can get a video of this. Okay, so I'm gonna take a video of this at the same time. So here's, a, here's how we did it. I said, look, we got these points right here, all right? I want you to spread these toes, one, two points, and there's a third one back here which was painful on him. Let's spread these toes out as wide as you can, okay? I had him stick his fingers in there. Sorry. I'm not the great, greatest videographer for myself. Drill those things out because we're trying to create a, a narrow base or a wide base of support. Same thing on the other side. And now if you see in the main video, you're going to see that I'm going to lean forward. Got it? So I'm actually just drilling the contact points of the digits of my toes into the ground, not curling them down like this. Okay, you're gonna see actually see this knuckling right here. And it was actually kind of cool to see even when he was squatting with his uh, movement screen that these two knuckles drilled up and the rest of everything stayed flat. So to me that means that we're looking at toe flex flexor uh, compensation and there's a possibility of some foot things we're gonna find. That's why I started with the valet forward lean in case you wanna know. So we're just going here, just leaning forward like a plank, contract the abdominal wall, make sure that you are only going as far as you can, minus going up onto the toes the entire way, okay? The heel's just barely gonna creep off the ground. So I had him do just about, what did we do? We did about five to 10 reps of it. After that, we went back and forth again. I said, how's that feel? He's like, hey, that got better. And here's the reason why he felt that. It's because number one, he wasn't putting direct pressure onto his heel anymore. I had him walk directly uh, immediately after that. How did that feel? It improved as well. 
So for me, what this meant is we're going to go down the path of doing some foot loading, some contact point loading. And this is just the forward backwards here. This is the sagittal plane, okay? So I wanted to add in next, we added some more complex planes, and for that I used a post. Now I've shown this one as well, and I like to think of this as a, uh, like we're, we're looking to the outfield and we're going to tag up, like a baseball tag up type of exercise. Now you can do it with elbow on, you can do it with hand on. For me, hand on is easier to show for some reason, okay? So I like to say, okay, so you're watching, so someone hit a ball, it's coming over, you're at first base and you see it and getting tagged up. So there's a base right there, you got to be on the base. So we're going to drill, I should probably get my camera again here. We're going to drill a couple points into the ground, okay? Most of the pressure is going to be in here, and as you see, as I barely lift this foot up, or the heel up, I'm going to drive into here, and especially if I turn the foot, it's going to use more of this right here as well. Hand up, load onto the base, turn slightly, look for the ball, get low, get ready, and then we just lean. Okay? We're wedging ourselves into the wall. And this is a great exercise for a lot of people with foot conditions, especially if we're going to improve foot strength because we're really not going through extreme range of motion. Okay? And even the toes, which I am okay with, you can put them into dorsiflexion right here and load it again. Okay? Depending upon what you're trying to accomplish and what you're trying to uh, affect on the person. For this gentleman, all we did was load into here bend the knee, bend the hip, get low, look for the ball, lift. Nothing else should change. Common things that people do, and he did it as well, as soon as he lifted, he went like this, okay? I like to look at the knee, I say, just soften the knee, man. Just soften the knee, break at the hip, bend the knee, load the hip, get low, look for the ball, lean in slightly, and lift. A common thing people do as a fault as well is there's a line right here, okay? You gotta keep this foot back behind the line if you're gonna do it right. You guys, you actually got to round the bases. You're not going to go directly to it. Well, I think you might go directly to it in this case. So after this, I asked the guy, let's try it again. Hey, that feels better. I said, great. Look, all this stuff is working, so let's try two more things. Okay? The next one, this is a forward wall wedging. And I picked this mainly because I thought this guy has got, he's got those two toes that aren't working on the right side or they're compensating. Why don't we start to load the foot? with a lengthening pattern with the toes, according to, I think it's human locomotion. Um, the book, extension is what loads the feet the best, improves the arch strength, and improves support for the arch, okay? So we're driving in right here, toes up, and pause, okay? As I haven't changed sides, I'm not looking for anything else to change other than a slow loading of the foot. Feel comfortable, bring this up, nothing changes. If they go too high, they'll lean out of it. Okay, so just make sure they can even drag the toes along the ground. That's all I'm looking for. So we did that. Tried it again. Hey, it feels pretty good. So we did one last thing. This is, I don't know if there's actually a name for it, so I'm gonna give it one right now, okay? So this is going from a low kneel to a tall kneel. And the reason why I chose it was mainly because we're teaching a hip hinging pattern, but also too, we're getting a ton of load onto the feet. And if you haven't tried this yet, you're gonna love it, okay? Again, citing, citing the research, which I will find it, and, and I'll put it below on this, pot, on, this, uh, on this video, or you can do it with a correlated article. When the toes are in dorsiflexion or extended, they're, they are, they're gonna build strength quicker. And what we find in a lot of foot, ankle, uh, uh, plantar fasciitis, Morton's neuromas, all these different odd conditions of the foot and ankle, they have one good thing in common. The toes are weak, okay? So let's strengthen these toes up. So you're gonna drive the toes into the ground, drop the hips back, and pause. Okay, hold for five. Where I feel this right now is the toes and, he and feet are loading, and my quads are making it so I'm not passively going and le leaning onto the, onto the heels. So it's down like this, pause. This whole thing should be stacked and drive, okay? This exercise loaded from with a band or a kettlebell is called the stallion. I don't know if it's technically called the stallion if we're not loading it. 
So down, pause. From here, you can choose a couple different things. You can do forward lean slightly to enforce more of the hip hinging pattern, or if you're trying to load the toes a little bit more, then you go back. Because now this is more directly over that. We're not counterbalancing at all. And if you try this on your own, before you give it to any of your patients, you're going to feel that this is significantly easier than this. Okay? So use the load accordingly. So this gentleman, uh, he responded extremely well to this and he was extremely happy and he only actually only had to come a couple times. If you're not finding these types of functional injuries on your patients, then you're doing them a disservice. I would strongly suggest try something like this first to see if you can change the loading pattern and how they're moving. That's not to say there's not an adjustment or a tissue work or a taping job or something like that that will, that there's gonna, there could be something that still helps them, but there's a sliding scale here. And I'm gonna create this for all the chiros and PTs out there is because it's very hard for patients to understand typically is that when they have their care, there's a gradient, okay? There's 100% there's stabilization or there's 100%, let's just say too loose, too tight, okay? Something's too tight, you loosen it. If something's too loose, you tighten it. I know it's more complex than that, but when we're talking in patient terms, this is pretty solid, okay? Nothing is ever 100% in either direction. Typically, we're on that one end or another. So what I tell people is that this guy right here, what we found was that he responded, responded extremely well to something that was too, something was too loose, so we, we tightened it, or we improved movement or improved loading. Generally speaking, this would be a movement correction. If he didn't, and granted, he was someone who had a extreme surgery and he had hardware there, he would respond probably to this. And he's probably gotten a lot of it over his time, I don't recall. But we can't just jump to that. We gotta see if we can change this loading pattern first. Is there anything that we can do to get his body to stop loading the area that is screaming out in pain? I told this gentleman that you are majority here, but that does not mean you're 100% there, okay? There's a section in there which is a little bit closer to this side that we will work on later, but your responsibility is to get this part done learn it here and then do it at home and you're gonna respond better than what you thought you would if you only did this. I hope this was helpful to you guys. I hope it is something that you've been looking for. I know there's a lot of chiropractic schools out there that don't always get to include uh, corrective exercise, rehab, or therapies that are not just manual therapies or treatment-based or passive therapies, at least early on in school. So I wanna make sure that we're all getting to the point where we can see real cases like this and be able to apply the skill sets immediately once we get out of school. Subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you guys soon and share with another classmate who did not get to see this case.